Located on the Mississippi River, not far from the Gulf of Mexico, is the New Orleans suburb of Metairie, a tight-knit community that is home to Zeke's, a neighborhood restaurant opened in 2002 by a charismatic entrepreneur named Zeke Ugnast. Zeke was six foot four, big and goofy, but you know what? The man knew how to have a good time, and he knew how to run a pretty good restaurant. Everyone came to Zeke's when it first opened because there was just a good vibe in this place. Good people, food was always good. I mean, we used to do 750 people in here on a Friday night. But in 2005, Zeke tragically died during Hurricane Katrina, and the ownership and the direction of the restaurant was up in the air. After Katrina, this place was in limbo. So the Cortello saw it, and then they pretty much took on the place. Hi, guys. How are y'all tonight? Welcome to Zeke's. When we bought Zeke's, we chose to keep the name because Zeke's did a very good business, and that just made business sense to us. All right, guys. First guest. When Daryl first took over, pretty much changed everything. He cut staff. He cut product. He went to uh, lesser quality. Wouldn't feed that to your dog. And then on top of that, he raised the prices. It's expensive. It's a little over the top. I feel as though I'm completely handcuffed in the kitchen. Dude, I'd love to do like a steam clams. That's not us. I don't think that's us. You know what I'm saying? I'm always trying to beg him or plea him. Can we try that? Can we do this? And Daryl doesn't allow it. I'm trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. I ask myself all the time, why do I even stay here? Uh-uh, no sitting on the job. Servers here are all talked down to or disrespected. People just don't feel appreciated. Daryl cut my pay in the last six months. I can't afford raises right now. And it's made me work more hours since he cut my pay. Daryl, we got three orders of green tomatoes left. Cutting them a little thick, too, I'll tell you that. I'm not looking to squeak by. I'm looking for financial rewards in this business. The short change. That kind of offended a lot of Zeke's regulars. And this has just steadily declined. Meatballs, plain and bland. Unless he's got a pot of gold stashed somewhere, there's no way this restaurant would last, you know, a month. All right. Payroll was today. How'd we do? <laughs> That's not a good question. Financially, we are not doing great. Well, we got to catch up somewhere. It's not happening. We're not going to make it if we don't have Chef Ramsey come in and tell us what he thinks we can do differently to change this. Because obviously, what we're doing, it's not really working. Physically, emotionally, it's been hard. I have put everything I can possibly put into Zeke's, but seats aren't full, so something's going on, and we're killing ourselves trying to find out. Before heading to Zeke's, Gordon has arranged to meet some Metairie locals to gain some insight into the restaurant and the neighborhood. Oh, doing good. How are we doing this morning? Very well indeed, thank you. Morning. Morning. How are we? Now tell me about the area, Metri. What does it, uh, what does it stand for? So it's a town on the East Bank. Uh-huh. They got a lot of people. They got some good Russian stuff there. And have you heard of a restaurant called Zeke's? We used to go there quite a bit. I haven't been there in a while, but before Katrina, we used to go there quite a bit. Before Katrina, we feel like every Friday, it was great. But after Katrina, we probably only been once or twice. What's the difference in food? Got pricey and average. Oh, really? Yeah. The quality has gone down quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, the atmosphere wasn't the same. They had lost the magic, the feel of the restaurant. Right, and it just changed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. After hearing unfavorable reviews, Chef Ramsay heads over to Zeke's to continue his investigation. And there is nothing more telling than lunch. Hello. Well, hello, Chef Ramsay. Welcome to Zeke's. I'm, I'm very happy to be Patella. here. Nice to meet you. Definitely. Come right this way. All right, guys, I think we've got a special guest. Heard that. Heard that. Help me get up to speed. You are the owner. Yeah. You run the business with Zeke? My husband, no, my husband is Daryl. Daryl. And where is he? He is in the kitchen. So who's Zeke? Zeke was the original man who opened the restaurant, um, passed away right after Katrina. Daryl. And we purchased it from his estate, so we've had it for almost five years. What did you change after you bought it? The menu items are similar. Okay, um, good. We've definitely taken some off and changed some recipes. And the chef is the same? Emil is the kitchen Emil. manager. Yes. Whose decision is it with the new dishes? So My husband, Daryl. He's got a couple of his recipes on the menu. And where did he train as a chef? He's never trained as a chef. If you're not a chef, why would you put dishes on the menu? Being in the business, I guess. Okay. Um, does the chef agree with those dishes, or is it just because he's the owner, that's why he gets them on? I guess talk to him about it. Okay, let me have a look at the menu. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Wow. Hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm well, I'm so happy to be in Louisiana. My first time. Good. Thank Welcome. you. Your first name is? Candice. Candice. I saw on the menu the oyster... Oyster's Cortello. It's an invented dish for our restaurant. The Cortellos is Daryl and Ellen, so they made they made it up. So the owners have named an oyster after them? Yes, they have. They bought the restaurant, now you want your name on the menu. Yes. Sounds like someone's struggling for power. <laughs> I've got to try one. OK. Yeah. And I must have some boiled shrimp. Boiled shrimp. And what specials do you have, my dummy? We have a chicken fried steak today. Let's go for it. We do have also traditional bread pudding. Let's go for that. And I think we're done. OK. Thank you. Look what I got. All right, here we go. When Daryl got here, he kind of implemented his own menu. It really gets frustrating because Daryl really has no idea, culinary-wise, what he's doing. Candace, you ready? I'm going to take out the boiled chef to him. Chef Ramsay is going to love this food. It's simple food, it's basic food, it's feel-good food, but it's done very well and fresh. OK. Boiled mm. shrimp. Thanks, Tony. My first Louisiana shrimp. Yeah, everything's soft. They should peel easily and sort of pop out the shell, but I'm struggling to peel them. Mm. I mean, that is nasty. What I'm struggling for here is the lack of freshness. They feel and taste slightly mushy, which is a big disappointment. Candice, where are the shrimps fresh? They're fresh frozen. They're fresh frozen. frozen. I know it's kind of an oxymoron. But you can buy fresh shrimp yes. within a mile from Yes, them. yes. The frozen shrimp tastes like shit. Sorry. Crap. <laughs> wanted to know why we would get frozen shrimp when you can go to, like, the market and get them fresh every day. It's not uncommon to have frozen shrimp because some things are OK frozen. How we look on the oysters? Coming right now. All right. Wow, that back wall is hideous. What a mess. Yeah. You got two seconds, please? Yes. And what's with the, uh, the swamp decor? <laughs> Whose idea was that? Um, mine and my husband's. To eat in a swamp? For children or for adults? For both. For both. For both. Oysters Cortello. That's not worth me. All right, here we go. OK, thank you. All right. What the hell is that? These are the Oysters Cortello. Oysters Cortello. So I suppose you go like that. Wow, they're dreadful. Oysters named after the owner. I certainly wouldn't put my name on that. I wouldn't even put my enemy's name on that. Take it for you? Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you. That's depressing, isn't it? No. Just terrible. Oysters Cortello, I don't know what to say about that. I eat them myself. I think they're delicious. Absolutely delicious. Now, what do you say? Oysters Cortello just ain't working. This is killing me not to know what he's saying. This is the fried chicken steak, right? Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Bland as anything. No seasoning, no care. Look at that. Ugh. Candice, what the hell is that? It looks like it's just had a giraffe's tongue cut out and deep fat fried. People complain that the quality of the food here is horrible. Unbelievable. Daryl's not listening to the feedback that he gets and he's going to do what he wants to do. Daryl. Yep. He said that it looks like somebody cut out a giraffe's tongue, battered and fried it. I'm not going to agree with that. It didn't look that way to me. I mean, that's what normally goes out. It's a good product. So it looked like we cut out a giraffe's tongue. Wow, wow, wow. Jesus. Thanks, Tony. Doesn't look fantastic. delicious. Who made that? Emil, it makes it. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just so happy that Chef Ramsay likes the bread pudding. It feels great to end on a good note. Love the bread pudding. You like the bread pudding? Good. There we go. Loved it. I took full responsibility for bread pudding. That is all me. Daryl doesn't really have influence on that. Thank God. Thank God he likes something I did. I'll take that any day. Hello. Hello, Chef. And this is? Daryl. Daryl. The owner. Yes, Chef. Introduce me to your uh, brigade. Chef Emil, Marcos. Emil, good yes, to see you, buddy. Nice to Likewise. You. Jason Carpenter. Jason, good to see you. There's a lot of things that, that need changing, and, you know, Daryl is, is one of them. Can I talk about lunch? Yes. My god, what a disaster. The food, 
is below standard. Why wouldn't you buy fresh shrimp? I simply don't have the time to go to the market. Excuse me? Where are we? We're Come in New on. Orleans. Come on, big boy. Chicken fried steak. Disaster. What cut of meat was that? Not a very good cut. No. Are you proud to serve that food? No, sir. Was that the same quality of steak that we were using years ago? No, sir. Then why have you changed the standard? Uh, it's, it's up to Daryl. Is that a cutting corner method to save no, money? No, or? no, Chef, everything is shit to you. Yeah. But we had diners eating all lunch, full dining room, but nothing <laughs> sent back. Do you honestly think, just because they don't send it back, that your food is fucking amazing? That's good enough for you to continue. No, you can't be that fucking stupid. Point taken. If they want to be that stupid, you've got no chance. I don't buy the fact that it's bad quality food. That's bullshit. Hard to believe this was once a great place. After receiving some harsh words from Chef Ramsay, the food is below standard. Daryl has some words of his own. You know, Chef says everything is shit. It's embarrassing. There's nothing good about the menu. I, you know, I don't buy that shit. I will never believe the food is shit. You're not going to come in. I've been eating this food all my life. Chef Ramsay doesn't know world's food. That's it. I mean, you cut all the food down you want. You can't break me. It's an hour before dinner service, and Chef Ramsay hopes a private meeting with the two chefs, Emil and Jason, can shed some light on the restaurant's main issues. OK. So, I don't get it. Some of the things I encountered there today were just awful. That can't be your wish, to cook with frozen ingredients. We talk about it every day, and yep. it just gets swept under the table. I tell him the second he starts cutting the cost, you yep. get a cheaper product. Yep. And you know it's going to taste like shit, and trying to explain that to him, yep. just like, you know, is, is like talking to this wall right here. And how long has it been going on like that? Since right around the time he took over. The only thing Daryl and Ellen see is money, and that's what scares me. Their whole purpose is money, 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 money. We feel like our hands are so tied. As far as ordering goes, everything goes, the only other option was to leave. Me and him both go. Yes. Yeah. You know, what do you do? Just walk out the place? I mean, we got a lot of personal memories in this place, just to yeah. walk out of it. Granted, I, I get that, but it doesn't stop you from having your voice. Everybody here is just kind of waiting for the place to belly up and go find a new job somewhere else. I'm here to help put this freaking place back on the map. Yes, sir. You're absolutely right. Yes, we have only two options, Chef Ramsay or God, and I don't think the second coming's happening anytime soon. Thanks for the catch-up. Thank you. Thank you. After gaining some insight from Jason and Emil... Hey, I need shrimp portions. Chef Ramsay is eager to see how this restaurant functions in a dinner service. Uh, how does this work? Uh, Emil. When were these done? Um, last night. Why are they bagged? He portions them out to order. Ready? What's the idea of putting everything in bags? Portion sort of size. Portion size. I like to have everything in quantitative perspective. If I give too much, you get a happy customer here. You don't get a good customer. They're happy because they're getting three times what they should be getting. I'm getting nothing. I don't make money on that. It's food. You know, we're not cutting uh, piping for bathroom food. Hi, welcome to Zeke's. How many do we have in the party? Four. It's Chef Ramsay's first time in Louisiana. Come right this way, please. And not surprisingly, Zeke's is completely booked. And tonight, our special is at lasagna. Come on, lasagna, lasagna. I got a seafood platter, no oyster sub shrimp. I'm at the expo station. I like to see all the food go out. Side of new potatoes, Daryl. I uh, make sure every dish goes out like I want it to go out. Can I run anything? Nope. Shrimp platter. Can any of that go? I'm waiting on dishes to complete the order. It doesn't concern you that food's just dying in the window? Yeah, but we're pushing as hard as we can. Bloody hell. Yeah. Been here a long time. For expediting is one thing. Standing here and saying nothing is another. Wow, fucking hell. It's an hour into dinner service, and the first wave of food is finally making its way out to the customers. Sorry about the wait. They are backed up. Everybody's food at the table now. Let me get uh, your server. My apologies. And the food isn't the only thing that's getting a chilly reception. Can I ask something? Do you mind not standing there like that? It's so dour. I think you can be more proactive. I don't want to hover, you know. But you can make yourself busy. OK, I got it. I'm ready. Thank you. 
All right, look what I got. What's that one? Lasagna. Lasagna. When was the lasagna made? Last Thursday. Last Thursday. And today's Thursday, right? Correct. Seven and stuff from a week ago. Help me to understand that, uh, that stupidity. Well, we made the, made the pan, we didn't sell it all. It's wrapped up in portions and it's frozen. I thought that's a bad thing. Lasagna, it's all done fresh and cooked. And uh, we'll wrap the portions up separately. We'll put them in the freezer. It works. It is the best lasagna you're going to get. Is this special, right? Yes, it is. OK, so how the fuck is that special in your tiny mind when it was cooked a week ago? I don't have a tiny mind. I'm telling you, you have a tiny mind. It can't be that special if you're going to stand here and tell me that this, it's special. The, the product is good. Daryl runs his kitchen with 90% bravado, and, you know, the other 10%, he just wings it. This is a good product. This is good food. Oh, man. My god. It's getting worse. Yeah, he's a tough nut, your uh, expediter. So we have a special today. When do you think that lasagna was made? Today. Homemade lasagna? Right. Last Thursday. How can it be that special when it's from a week ago? Well, you know, it's frozen, so it's not like sitting there getting mildew on it. And our customers absolutely love the lasagna. I don't think that's our biggest issue, is lasagna. I mean, that's absolutely incorrect. What do you think they would feel like if you told them the day special was cooked a week ago, frozen? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure they would probably be surprised that it was so good and that it was made last week and frozen. Shall I ask them all? Would you like me to walk with you? I know I'm not going to walk, I'm going to stand up and shout. Oh, really? <laughs> come out to restaurants and you read today's specials, for instance, a beautiful homemade lasagna, would you expect that lasagna to be made today? Yes! yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have ordered lasagna? How would you feel if I told you all that today's lasagna that's been served was made a week ago? This is humiliating. After making a shocking discovery about today's special... When was the lasagna made? Last Thursday. Chef Ramsay made an announcement. Today's lasagna that's been served was made a week ago. <laughs> that is not sitting well with customers. My apologies to those that have ordered the lasagna. Have a look at the potential other specials. One of a tea. Thank you. Thank you. This is humiliating. It's absolutely better, of course, when it's fresh and it's served right out of the pan, but it's not horrible. I've just told the customers that today's lasagna was reheated from a week ago. The feedback was shock horror. 86 of lasagna. Yes, sir. Yeah. With Chef Ramsay's announcement fresh in their minds... Get a, uh, get a check. Get the check, OK. Customers have seemed to have lost their appetite. Fuck me. Did y'all eat already? <laughs> yeah, I had the lasagna. <laughs> After witnessing a dinner service full of problems... You got two seconds, please? Yes, absolutely. Chef Ramsay is anxious to have a chat with the owners. Oh, dear. Did you hear the customers tonight when I told them lasagna was a week old? Did you hear? Here's what happens. Cook lasagna, and it doesn't sell. Do you throw it away? No, we don't throw it away. We wrap it. I'm here to help, but I tell you what, I can't help you when you're standing there and trying to come up with excuses to why customers pay good money for frozen shit that cooked a week ago, and you call it a special. We don't feel like it puts out an awful product. You don't give a shit about food. It's not true. Your passion's about portion control, measurements, frozen foods reheated in a microwave. Restaurants don't run like this. I disagree. I disagree with that also, definitely. Trust me, you are not a fucking restaurateur. You're the owner, you're paying rent here. When you start dealing with all this crap and your name's on that lease, then you tell me what you want to do. After being stonewalled by owners in denial. Morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Chef Ramsay has called a staff meeting. Two minutes, please. Hoping to bring all of the restaurant's issues into the open. OK. I want you to tell me the frustrations, the anger, and the things that really upset you the most. Emil. Um, 
I, I just feel as though I'm getting pounded with a mallet constantly when I walk into this place. I went from working 40 hours to working about 50 for $400 a week. That pisses me off. I feel that we don't get any respect. I'm here all the time. I don't get to eat lunch. I should have a meal. I should have a shift meal. This is messed up. We are talked down to like we're dirt. And it's not right. Listen, um, I really appreciate the openness and the honesty. I knew it was bad, but I didn't quite understand it. It hit that um, level of hurt. I think it's it just sad that we're all sitting here and that we actually have to even beat at this point. I think we all, the whole group of us here, are pretty much struggling. No one's getting that message across. I need to get through to them. Daryl and Ellen are about to arrive. I want you to tell them. Everybody was saying what they wanted to say and getting it off their chest, but it's kind of different from telling Chef Ramsay versus telling Daryl. Don't be nervous. I don't want you to be afraid. I've got your back. OK? And here they are. Good morning. Good morning. I've been here having a staff meeting. Um, we've gone through some issues um, this morning that's been bothering them. But rather than me trying to tell you how they feel, I think they should speak. Certainly. Who's going to go first? I go first. I don't feel as though we all gain much respect around here. And I don't think that you, as an owner, have our back. Candace, Ashley, is that how you feel? You really do talk to us like dirt sometimes. My intent is not to talk down to somebody. But that's how it comes out. Jason, talk to Daryl, please. My biggest problem that I have is just, I don't think you have a clue as to how this place runs. Me? Yeah. Wow. I think that you're so stuck on the numbers, the actual essence of having a restaurant and serving good food and giving customer service and happy employees, that, that's gone. I, I don't understand. We hear it every single night, every single day, from our customers what needs to be changed and why they don't come back. We let you know these things, and you don't give a shit. Nothing's done. You don't care. Wow. Pay, pay is ridiculous here. I really don't want to break down, because I've been here a long time. And I'm not getting paid jack shit. For somebody to be here that long. I've been here since 2006. Why haven't I never got a pay raise? OK, let me say something real quick. Since we're all telling the truth, first of all, Daryl and I have taken thousands and thousands of dollars out of our personal account to pay your paychecks. So why not just close the place down? We're not giving up. We don't want to give up. If you want to give up, that's fine. This isn't I'm your business. We don't want to leave each other because we all love each other. We don't want to leave. Not at all. But I need to make money to support my family. You know what? So do we. Y'all are acting like it's us against y'all, and it's not. This is a business where we have costs and expenses. And I ask you to take that pay cut. It's either that or labor costs get so high, I'm out. But you can go on five vacations in the summer. And you're struggling for money. Right. That is fucked up. Period. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. After Chef Ramsay arranged for the staff to air their grievances, I don't think you have a clue as to how this place runs. The defiant owners are not having any of it. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. If I were piling up money back there, then I could see you being pissed off. But we're not piling up money back there. I can't show appreciation in dollars at this point. They maybe have this picture of me with this pile of money going, ha, 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 nobody's going to get it. We don't have the money. I'm accepting the truth from you guys. Accept it from me, please. 
things aren't going well, I understand that. But in terms of morale, there's an air of discontent. They feel abused. And I'm not saying the staff are perfect, but you're the owners, and you set an example. We have to fix what's broken within. So how about starting over again and turning the page and the beginning of a new chapter? I understand those frustrations. You are wonderful people. So I want you all here, and you will have my respect. I guarantee that from me. And there's a lot of love for you guys from Ellen and I, and I truly mean that. Good. We did make some progress. The air is clearer. OK, it's a new day here at Zeke's. I've got some ideas that I need to uh, put into place to really start putting this place back on the map. Thank you. Honestly, I don't think that Daryl and Ellen heard what, what we were saying. He was just saying what was right, just to get Chef Ramsay off of his back. We'll see what happens. Oh, Lord. After attempting to open Daryl and Ellen's eyes to the staff morale problems, Chef Ramsay has devised a plan to test the chefs and showcase their abilities. OK, it's been so obvious that you've been handcuffed by Daryl. And here's what I want you to do. Show Daryl how creative, how inspirational, how exciting you can be with seafood. There's a grocery store literally two miles away from here, OK? Have a look at the ingredients, get inspired, come back, get creative. I want to see that on a plate, yeah? Thank you, Chef. Good. Right now, I'm pretty jacked up. Gordon Ramsay himself said, Jason, time for you to be inspired. Go let it happen. Let's see what you got. All right, let's see what they got fresh. How may I help you? Redfish Red fresh? Fish. Just put it out an hour and a half ago. That's what we're looking for. It's extremely liberating to have this freedom to showcase and do what we want to do, cook good food. Right, Very nice to meet thanks, you. Thanks, guys. I am uh, looking for red onions with uh, asparagus. A red pepper. This will be the last thing I get when I'm ready to ride. There it is. There it is. Showcase the skills. So yeah. happy. Very Think nice. of something creative and really let it go, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, off we go, guys, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna do a chicken fried steak at the same time, okay? Brilliant. Own it, yeah? Yes, chef. You can put a little lime juice in there? Yes. More yeah, lime just... juice. I'm not done yet with it. Okay, good. Yeah, I love the idea. The uh, bacon and cheddar, cheddar. Nice. So in terms of the inspiration, tell me what it is. Try to keep it southern with the grits, fresh with the salmon, and classic with the capers, with the onions, with the tomatoes. Good. Keep it with the New Orleans theme, red fish, and then grilled vegetables, fresh rice, fresh ingredients. Just a, a fun dish. Pretty good job. The difference is night and day, let me tell you that. Beautiful. Now, you say nothing. You didn't cook them. I cooked them. Do you understand? Yes. OK, let's go. Come over, guys. Please. Wow, look at that. You think of Louisiana, first thing you think of is freshness. But when I walked into your restaurant, what I didn't expect was frozen seafood. So I got my team to get some ingredients for me. It's like, you both just have a little taste. Taste the freshness. A beautiful charbroiled salmon done with grits. Creamy, tasty, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I got hold of some uh, redfish, marinated zucchini with some rice and a really nice mango salsa. Mm. Oh my gosh, this redfish is delicious. It's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal? It's absolutely. Watching them eat my dish and not knowing that it was mine, and to say that, you know, it looked like it was from their heart. I'd like you to have a little taste of that chicken fried steak. I just lightly pounded it and then fried it twice. So it should just melt in your mouth. It does melt, yeah. literally. Literally melted, Chef. I couldn't believe how good it was. The presentation was beautiful, and it was fresh yeah. ingredients, and they tasted wonderful. They're all absolutely phenomenal. And you taste the difference? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. There's something you need to know about the seafood dishes. I didn't cook them. The two chefs put those dishes together. Wow. The seafood dishes mm -hmm. are your boys. Delicious, absolutely. Wow. Phenom they really are, they're phenomenal. It really opened my eyes to what I, I, I wasn't letting them do, honestly. Food is art, and I was not letting them create their art. These aren't just delicious. They're beautiful, and they come from right inside you. I know that. You did a fantastic job. It feels really good that Daryl and Ellen recognize my potential, and I think that my abilities have been shown, and hopefully this is the first step forward. This is the new Zeke. I can see that's what we're looking for. And all I could really think to myself was, about fucking time you see it. Really good job. Well done. It's good. After finally having at least a small breakthrough with the owners, Chef Ramsay decides to have his team work through the night on the biggest restaurant makeover they have ever done. Right, good morning. 
Morning, chef. Excited? Are you ready to see the Newsies? Yes. yes. Let's go. Welcome to the Newsies. Here we go. Oh, Come wow. in, please. Oh, oh my God. Are you kidding me? In, in, oh. in. Oh, nice. Oh, oh man, that's nice. Look at that. Oh, my God. Let's start with the walls. Gone is the swamp. Look at all the, the, all the old doors. Reclaimed doors. It's got that nostalgia, and it's got that comfort feel, right? Feel like home. Look at this. You've got the most amazing chairs, brand new chairs. It just feels authentic. Let me say this, please. please. You have found our identity. Wonderful. This is Wonderful. us. I'm astonished. I mean, truly. I didn't really have any expectations, but this has surpassed anything I could possibly imagine. There is one more thing I'd like to show you. <laughs> You're going to start peeing your pants. Oh, oh man, that's it. Nice. Oh, that's nice. nice. There we are, our boil house. <gasps> oh, my god! From shucking your oysters to cooking your shrimp, this is going to be a substantial part of the menu. And a meal. It's going to take so much pressure off you and Jason. This should just run on its own, and it should almost double the turnover. Did I see you smile again? That's the second time in 24 hours. Uh -huh. Dude, huh? they're going to arrest you for being too happy. <laughs> Jeff Ramsey has given this staff, this place, my family, our friends, our customers, a new beginning. It's unbelievable. Honestly, when people would ask me where I work, I would never say Zeke's. I just say I'm a cook. Mm -hmm. Now I I'm, I'm proud to say that I work here. A new beginning and a new identity for Zeke's. Along with making the decor more inviting, Chef Ramsay has replaced Zeke's outdated, stale menu with a modern update of classic New Orleans cuisine. Oh, my gosh. My goodness me. This is going to put Zeke's back on the map. Smell it. Be careful. It's fresh. Goodness. <laughs> Every dish is absolutely beautiful. OK, let's start off top of the table. Zeke's house boil, yes. Bucket of shrimps, yes. Bucket of blue crabs, a great sharing festive, localized bucket. Push them, OK? Back in the menu, the entrees. Pecan crusted catfish, so with a classic tartar sauce and a herb salad. Country fried steak, big hit. Say no more, such a gravy. Delicious, slightly heated in that gravy. So you've got that nice little burn at the back of your throat. Blackened alligator, wonderful Creole sauce. Absolutely delicious. Because this has now become not the old Zeke's, your Zeke's. Thank you. You've got your identity. Now make it yours. Absolutely incredible. Beautiful. Come here. Come uh, here. The way Chef created the menu and the dishes, uh, they don't have a menu like that around here. Dig in. Enjoy. So not only do we have something great to put on the table, but it's not in the way around. Nobody else has it. Oh, Did you taste the cornbread? The menu is phenomenal. I'm right. proud to have it and excited and can't wait for everybody else to come in and try it. It's That's delicious. I feel right now we have the most diverse Louisiana Southern menu. I mean, we very well may have the best menu. Rich in flavor, rich in texture. Wow. Hi, guys. Welcome to Zeke's. The community of Metairie had a love affair with this restaurant that went sour. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Shrimps are amazing. Chef Ramsay's revamp and tonight's relaunch will be a strong indicator if it's possible for this love affair to resume. I'm going to try and smother it. I'm going to try the black and alligator. And with so many changes in place and so many people in the dining room, Chef Ramsay is hoping the boil house will take some of the pressure off the kitchen. Any, uh, any orders on yet in the boil house? No. Nothing in the boil house already. So get hold of the waitresses, call them in and say, right, start pushing them. And we've got to use that place. We've got to get used to that. Let's go. Great. Sell boil food. I'm, I'm sell trying. one, OK? Sell one to a big table, please. Tonight we have a um, special. It's boiled lobster for two. I don't know if you saw it on the menu, but sell it by the bucket. Just bring us two soup number <laughs> right up. <laughs> two buckets of lobster for table five. Two, buckets, get of two buckets of lobster, please. Let's go. Put a little bit of butter on there. Give it a nice little glaze, OK? Good. That's it. Two lobsters. Let's go. Look what I have for y'all. Y'all enjoy. It looks good. Look at this. With the boil house now being utilized good. and satisfying customers, good. it's clearly allowed some breathing room for the kitchen. You're eight minutes on bay crab at 33. However, it's now up to Daryl to manage the time wisely. I worked hard today. Let's make it happen. You've got to focus on that window, communicate with these guys. One table leaving, one table working, so we don't get bumped down, yes? Yes, Chef. I need an 
alligator. I need a strip. Give me three minutes on that. Let's go. We need to push food up there and cook it as fast as we can. Green tomatoes, charcoal ices. I need it fast. Let's work one at a time. It's not a race. How are we looking? Three chops and alligator. Hold on one second, Daryl. Smother chop. How are we looking? Daryl, slow down for one minute. Let us catch up, huh? Hey, fucking hell. Yeah. With Daryl calling multiple tickets at the same time. Grits, mash, sweet potatoes. And more focused on speed than anything else. What ticket is it for? The kitchen is now completely confused. How's my pecan catfish? Where's my New York strip? Gotta go. Just put them in the window and we'll figure out how to plate them. Yes, whatever you got. Make sure it's done, huh? I was being told that I need this, this, and this right now, and I just try and move as fast as I can and get the food out. See, it just looks like crap. Do you agree? Yeah. No garnish? No. Go to the window like that. Daryl has managed to get the cooks producing the food at a much quicker pace. Thank you. That looks really good. I don't think this is cooked. But the dishes are not at the level that they should be. So is that is that cooked? It's not, is it? Excuse me. Can I get you another one, sir? Sure. Yeah. Guys, the fish is raw. Not tonight. Oh, just, man. just stop. Twenty-four is out. Everybody stop. What a joke. It's relaunch night at Zeke's. Mother Chop, how we like it? Daryl, slow down for one minute. Let us catch up, huh? And with Daryl pushing the cooks, food is leaving the kitchen quickly. Can I get you another one, stuff? Unfortunately, it's also coming back quickly. Guys, the fish is raw. Not tonight. Oh, man. Just stop. Everybody stop. I'm here. Jason, come around. I'd rather be three, four minutes later than rush food out there and the shit's coming back. Not tonight. An expediter should definitely set the tone for the rest of the kitchen. I think Daryl lost control of that. Uh, it's just a big catastrophe. What we've got to do is focus on one table at a time. We've got to communicate. Daryl, talk to me. Don't get too Where you at? Daryl, what table are you on? Daryl, take responsibility. I have to stop, refocus. Let's get these tickets out one at a time. I need to do a better job of communicating, very simply. All right, guys, let's focus. Where you at now, Daryl? Pecan, catfish, and black and alligator. In his hand, Daryl. Table one. Let's go. Move to the next ticket. I got 33, black and alligator, pecan, catfish. Coming right now, Daryl. Let's go. Following Chef Ramsay's advice of focusing on one table at a time. What table are you on? Table 10, yeah, Maggie I got cheese, I got, is I, up. Daryl and the chefs are now in sync. Please, let's get this to uh, 31. Like an alligator. Oh, thank you. Perfectly cooked dishes are leaving the kitchen. That's very really good. And are being enjoyed by thrilled customers. That's delicious. Good. Folks, news ahead. Now that this restaurant is on its way to a successful relaunch, Hi. Chef Ramsay is ready to spread the word. What happened with the restaurant before? Why did you come here? And this place was legendary. Um, it lost its way. It's now back on the map. And two new owners that are going to start their own beginning of a new chapter. What is the feedback you're already getting for tonight? That the food is fantastic. I mean, the menu's, it's fabulous. I highly recommend that you come in and try it. Let's finish, let's finish. Somebody get this to 14, please. Is there no more tickets coming in? Let's get this stuff out of here. Well, yep, that's that's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. Delicious. That's a wrap, Jack. The end of the night, the way it ended made you feel good. I think Daryl showed more personality tonight than he showed in the last few years. We still have some improvements to make, but you can see it's on the right track. Nice job. Good night, ladies. Thank you so much. OK. Tonight was about establishing a new Zeke's. And you achieved it. Yes, it's yes. For my first time in New Orleans, fuck me, did you give me a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> if Chef Ramsay told me a week ago that all these changes were going to happen. Why don't I, darling? I don't think I would have really believed it. Can I just have a quick word with you two? Amazing. Look at this place. The potential is huge. I know. Fantastic. It's now your Zeke's. Run with it. And Daryl, you do care. And you do have a heart, a big heart. Show it to your staff. Indeed, I will. Don't, don't hide that. I'm ready to do things the right way. Ready to get moving. It's a new, it's a new life. It's new energy. Good job. Thank you. Thank good you. Night. Thank you. Good, night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. We had a lot of issues here when I first arrived. The staff were at war with the owners, the food was miserable, and the restaurant was seriously struggling for an identity. But what I witnessed was a phenomenal comeback. And how fitting is that, that it took place here in the most resilient city across America, New Orleans. Week old lasagna, not so special. 
In the weeks that followed, a glowing report on the local news. As a family, as a restaurant, it's back on the map. Brought a surge of customers to the restaurant. Hi, how are y'all? Daryl and Ellen are doing their best to raise staff morale. You all did an excellent job. I can't do this without you guys. And are reaching out to the community. And we really thank you all for coming. It means a lot to us. Thanks. But Zeke's back on the map.